Number eight, show that the acceleration of any object down a frictionless incline that makes an angle theta with the horizontal is A equals G sine theta. Note that this acceleration is independent of mass. All right, so take a look guys over here. I created a little picture. Here's the uh, incline, right? We have a certain object with a certain mass, all right, on that incline. The surface here is frictionless, all right, so it's free to slide on down, okay? So, and it, uh, this incline makes an angle theta with the horizontal. Okay, so now, uh, in order to kind of answer this question, let's just think about this. What are the only forces acting on this block right now? What do you think? Well, the only forces acting on the block is gravity. The only force acting on the block is gravity. No friction, no applied force from any, you know, from any object or anywhere. It's just gravity, right? Gravity is going to pull this thing on down. Okay, but how does it do it? Well, let's do this first. Ready? I'm going to create a coordinate system. Okay, so I'm going to create a nice coordinate system that is perpendicular here. All right, well, it's perpendicular here, but it's also in the plumb line, straight vertical, and horizontal plane of the paper. So now watch. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to now just bring it on over. Okay. I'm going to put this in the center of the block. All right. So this now axis, all right, is this axis is basically perpendicular to the horizontal, right? Okay. Now, watch what we're going to do. I'm going to take this axis again. Okay. Let me just grab it again. I'm going to take this axis now and I'm going to rotate it. Okay. And I'm going to rotate it so that now the X plane of the axis is parallel to the incline plane. So watch. I'm just going to rotate it just like that. Okay? Now the question is, well, how far did I have to rotate that? Well, if you really think about this a couple of times, whatever the angle theta is that I located between the horizontal and the incline plane that's in the picture right now, it's going to, that angle will be the same as the angle that I rotate this plane to be. Okay, you'll see what I mean in a second. So I now aligned the, oops, I now align the x-axis of my coordinate system with the incline plane. Okay, so now if we think about the weight of the object, right, centered in the middle, where does the weight point? Remember, the weight always points straight down. The force is always straight down towards the earth. Okay, it's not straight down to the surface of the plane. It is literally straight down to the surface of the Earth. So that means that this vector that I just drew right here represents the weight. Okay, and that's the weight. And guess what this angle in here represents between my, the vector I just drew and the y-axis of my coordinate system. Guess what angle that is? That is the same angle as this, as that theta. Okay, so let me try to draw it a little actually bigger. All right, so let me draw this down a little more. Okay, that looks good. Draw the arrow. All right, I have an angle in here that's theta. Okay, cool. So, so far we're good to go. And remember that uh, this vertical uh, vector here is the weight of whatever the block is. Okay, and remember weight is simply W is equal... W is equal to mg, all right? So now here's the thing. Um, now, since I, since I align my axis so that the x-axis here of my plane is parallel to uh, the plane of the inclined plane, all right, what I'm, we know that the motion of this block will slide down in exactly this direction, right? It's gonna slide down the, in exactly that direction. Well, it's a little angle. That's a little worse, but you guys get the idea. It's gonna slide down in that direction. So I'll call that the X direction. Now that's what I need to find. I need to find some forces in that X direction. Now the only vector that I have in this problem is again, um, this weight vector. But that's in two of the planes, right? If this is the X axis, I should color it. If this is the X axis, and this is the Y axis, isn't this vector in both the X and the Y? Yeah, it is. What is the pure X component of that vector? Well, that would be this, my friends. That would be this 
side right there that I just drew in black. Okay, this side, look, it creates a triangle. That is F, I'll call it F sub X for now. Okay, that's the X component of this vector, the weight vector. Are we good so far? All right, now watch what we're gonna do. We know that this thing will accelerate down the hill with some acceleration, right? So I'll draw a little line up here. I'll just label this A, and we don't know what it is, okay? But what I can do now, now I since I have a force in the X direction, and I know that there's some type of acceleration, it's gonna slide down the hill because there's no friction, I'm gonna think about my formula here. Some of the forces in the X direction is equal to MAX, all right? So some of the forces in the X, what's the only force in the X here? There's only one, right? The one I drew here in black. Okay, and I label that just F sub X, right? So the force in the X direction here, that's the only force in the X direction is equal to MAX. All right, so we're good so far. Now here's the question. This does not look like this yet, right? So we need to turn it into this somehow. Well, the way we're going to do that is by uh, finding, or I shouldn't say really finding, but we have to get the weight involved in this formula somehow. And how do we do that? Well, it's gonna be through the F sub X. Remember, this makes a triangle, right? There's a triangle right here. So how do I relate W, which is essentially the hypotenuse, this angle theta, which is the same as that angle, right? This angle theta, and the side right here in black that is opposite of the angle. Oh, that's our friend, good old sine. Oh, we're getting close, right? Sine of theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So the sine of that angle will be equal to the opposite side, which was F sub X, I called, all over the weight. Now solve this thing for F sub X. Just simply cross multiply here. So we get F sub X is equal to uh, W, I'll start with, sine theta. So guess what I can do now? I can now take this thing and plug it in for F sub X here. So now let's see what we get. W sine of theta is equal to M A X. All right, well, we got sine theta, but it still doesn't look the same. Okay, well, maybe let's expand the W. What does the W represent? It represents the weight. How do you calculate weight? Well, don't we calculate it with MG? Isn't that what I wrote up here? So guess what I'm gonna do now, guys? I'm gonna take the MG and substitute it on in for W. Now, let's see what we have. MG sine of theta is equal to MAX. What can you do with the masses? You can cancel them. There they go, they went bye-bye. Now what do we have? Well, now we have A sub X is equal to G sine theta. Oh my goodness gracious. Great balls of fire. There it is. We found what we were looking for. All right. So guys, hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really, really do appreciate it. And um, if there's anyone else that, you know, could use help with these questions or whatnot, please uh, let them, tell them to check out our channel. That would be much appreciated. Thank you so very much.